I shot once for kink.com and I hated it. And the way you guys handled that, like I couldn't even finish the scene and you guys were so amazing to me. Like you paid me, you know, a prorated rate and no one made me feel bad. And it was just so great. I'm like, wow, for someone who <laughs> hated what we were doing, what an amazing thing. Yeah. And that's how we want everyone to feel. Yeah. Because we really actually do care. I mentioned before that I have a lot of models on the show and they talk about how kink has just been, kink.com has been a really wonderful place for them to explore different fetishes and how they always feel so safe and so well respected there and so well treated. And this is one of the things that I love to talk about because I know a lot of people that don't really understand the BDSM community, don't know a lot about porn they see those extreme scenes on kink.com and they think, oh my gosh, these poor people are being abused. They don't want anything to do with this. Look how sad they are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there wasn't there some, I don't remember who it was. There was some woman who had some kind of big following and she mentioned like, the number three video on porn, one of the top videos on Pornhub, and it was a girl being tied down and electrocuted. And she talked about, like, this is what's wrong with porn. Like, these poor girls being, you know, violently. <laughs> yeah, as though it was against her will. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Violently, um, you know, attacked and and all, all these things that we know are not true. So how do you handle... Like so, how do you, how do you guys conduct business? Like, how do you how does a typical day um, on a kink set go? So, I like to remind anyone who sees a video and goes, "Oh, that's real." That you know, Hollywood movies aren't real. Yeah, and you can do a lot of things that maybe look really scary, but you know, and maybe that maybe they hurt, maybe they don't, but you don't get to see behind the scenes in, in most Hollywood movies, unlike kink. Mm -hmm. So, on a kink set, prior to being booked, a performer is going to fully understand exactly what they're expected to do, or they're going to be asked whether it is okay to do the things that we want to do. And that's everything from, is the scene partner okay? Do you want to perform, you know, whatever the particular fetish of the channel is so are you fine with doing a pegging scene are you okay with you know cropping someone how are you you know and we try to make it very clear even the themes so mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to show up on a scene and go wait I'm not cool with this faux cess theme mm -hmm. I that's not okay with me I never agree to that and then be surprised because that's well I just think unethical do you, sorry, just quick question because I've found that I myself have run into this problem. Yeah. Do you insist on talking to the girl directly or do you go through their agent if they have an agent? And have you ever encountered a situation where the agent just has not communicated the situation to the girl and they've shown up on set and we're told something <laughs> different and we're surprised because their agent sucks? I think sadly that happens more than any of us would like. Yeah. And the folks who who produce for us now, they used to actually be in-house with us. They were kink employees. Now they have their own studios and they're making content the way that they want to do it. But, and some agents won't let you talk to the performers yourself. Yeah, I think we all know who we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you want to work with those folks, you do your best and you hope that the agent's passing along all of that information. Mm -hmm. But let's say that happens. Someone shows up and they're like, I don't want to ever do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there something in this wheelhouse that we can do that actually you would enjoy, or should we just kill it? Because mm -hmm. either way, it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. We're happy to make adjustments. Every one of our directors, they have worked for us for years and years, and they know that the kink ethos is you don't push people to do things they don't want to do. If you have to kill a scene, you have to kill a scene. If you have to change up what you're doing... That's what you do. That's just ingrained into every person who works or has worked with kink. Mm -hmm. So once they get there, the normal things, hair, makeup, wardrobe, whatever, they're going to go through and fill out a checklist. 
and it's going to tell us or the director what they're interested in doing, what they're not interested in doing. And there's also a section for comments like, oh, I might, but so for example, I'm cool with nipple clamps, but only this kind and not that kind. I hate, you know, tasers, but I'm okay with the cattle pro I mean, whatever it is. So the checklist is a starting point. Then we sit and talk. The director talks to all of our performers on camera about their checklists. And that's really what a checklist, a consent checklist should be. It's not for covering your ass. It's for initiating a conversation. Because communication is fundamental, not just to BDSM, I think, to shooting good porn. Mm -hmm. Once we have that conversation, that's, I think, usually part of the intro interview. And the reason for that is that we want to make it clear not only so that, you know, Visa is not angry that we are shocking young women against their will. Right. But also make it clear to anybody who sees that video, like, A, this is something someone super wanted to do. And so even if, like, there's a tear coming down, it's, you know, maybe tough in that moment, but this was their choice. Mm -hmm. And this, however it's kind of manifesting visually, it's what they want to be doing mm -hmm. and ultimately very satisfying. And if anything, I think it it's not really about, you know, don't worry, they're not captive. It's it's more just to for me, I like seeing BDSM sexuality portrayed really authentically and positively. It's not just yes sir, no ma'am. It's you know, there's a negotiation between every dom and every sub. What do you feel like doing today? Do you want me to crop your feet or no? Like, I want to set a good example. Mm -hmm. And so as the shoot goes on, and I think before we even start, it's very, very, very explicitly explained. If you want this to stop at any moment, you can use your safe word. You can call red. You can just say, hey, stop. Unless we decide that, you know, stop is not part of the scene, so you say something right. else. If you have a gag in, drop this piece of wood mm -hmm. or blink however many times. If you just need, I love, I don't know if you've ever interviewed JP the Pope, but watching him kind of do his intro, if you need me to scratch your nose, we can stop shooting. Like, whatever it is, your comfort is key. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like you have to do anything ever. Because you don't. There's always something else we can do. Yeah. So that's kind of how it starts. And then it's kind of up to them where they want to go. Right. Then at the end, we, we do the exit interview. I don't know that we were the first, but we certainly have been doing it for an awfully long time. Mm -hmm. And while I don't know that everybody else who does it is doing it for the right reasons anymore, mm. for us, it really is about, okay, how was that? What was good and what was bad? What would you not want to do again? Mm -hmm. What'd you learn about yourself? Would you want to do this with us ever again? If not, cool. We'll still be friends. We'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll wave at you at ABN. Do you ever have people say in the exit interview that they, they didn't enjoy the experience oh, yeah. and, they, and they didn't like it? And then what do you do? Do you still publish that video? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important to show reality. Mm -hmm. One of... One of the most memorable experiences I've had was I was at a convention and a, a young woman runs up to me and says, hey, I shot once for kink.com and I hated it. And the way you guys handled that, like I couldn't even finish the scene and you guys were so amazing to me. Like you paid me, you know, a prorated rate and no one made me feel bad. And it was just so great. I'm like, wow, for someone who <laughs> hated what we were doing, what an amazing thing. Yeah. And that's how... We want everyone to feel. Yeah. Because we really actually do care. Yeah. I think, you know, and, and as I mentioned, you guys have come up, and I think you've come up so much more now because the idea of consent and boundaries has become an issue that's come up so much in the past year. And there's been a lot of instances where directors have not respected performers' boundaries Performers have been made to do things that they didn't enjoy. Yeah. There wasn't communication on set about what the person was okay and wasn't okay with. 
And so now some companies are actually only now just instituting checklists, which I think you guys have had forever. Like you got, you were like the OG, like (laughs) consent boundary checklist people. And now the rest of us are kind of catching up on that. And even for me, you know, as a female producer who doesn't, who does, shoots pretty vanilla stuff for the most part, I am now so much more hyper aware of boundaries in communication, something that I wasn't before. And I've never had anybody say that they had a bad experience with me or was made to do something that they didn't want to do, to my knowledge, obviously. Um, But I never really, like, sat down and was like, okay, let's have you guys talk to each other about their do's and your don'ts. Because I guess for me, I always figured, like, well, we're not shooting anything that extreme anyways, and I'm a woman, and so, like, and I always try to make the models feel comfortable and feel like they have power and they have say on set. So, like, they should know that they can call cut whenever they want, right? And me, as a woman, I should be able to tell if somebody's uncomfortable. Like, I have that intuition. And And they'll be comfortable with you. And they'll be fine. Exactly. And and after all of these stories came up, I, it, it made me realize, like, that's not enough. It's actually really not enough. And it is really important that I make sure that the performers talk to each other about boundaries. Because sometimes it's not even something that's extreme. No. But it could be something that could trigger somebody because of something that happened to them in their past that obviously there's no way I could be aware of that. Oh, totally. And as upsetting as it is that there are all of these consent violations coming out. It's so it's so positive that they're finally being talked about. Right. Because they were obviously happening. Yeah. And it's really I mean, growing out of BDSM tradition, we consent is a very negotiated, very commu- I mean, BDSM is successful when there's good communication. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's given everyone pause to go, okay, I bet there are things that I hadn't even thought of that someone might not know or right. just question assumptions. And I, it's really amazing to hear that folks like you and, you know, other folks who are shooting vanilla stuff are not just learning from what's happened, but just kind of who always had everyone's best interest at heart now have a new, you know, way to do that opened up to them and they're pursuing it. Yeah. So, yeah. Kudos to you. Thanks. Thanks. I'm pretty proud of myself. myself. <laughs> All you're doing good. I'm just <laughs> so, one one thing I want to ask you is one of the something that people in the BDSM community always say and this is a phrase that I think is confusing to a lot of people is in a BDSM relationship, the sub always has the power. Can you explain that? What does that mean? So while on surface and in many ways, you know, the dominant is controlling the scene. And if you were to look and see someone serving someone else, you would say that they weren't in control. Everything that happens in a scene is dictated by the submissive. They are sharing what they will do, what they won't do. And maybe that's a a giant menu of things. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, if a sub really doesn't want to do something, that's not going to happen in a consensual negotiation. So when we outline ahead of time and communicate about where our boundaries are, then we can stay within them and the dom can can work within that entire you know realm without doing anything the sub actually isn't comfortable with and doesn't consent right. to. Right. And then the sub doesn't have to in the middle of the exchange be like, ah, I don't like that. Yeah. You know, because it's been talked about beforehand and then you can be in a, a safe place to freely explore whatever kinks you are, knowing that like And they can be always the pull boundaries. the ripcord. Yeah. You can always use the safe word. And that is, you know, everybody should have a safe word, whether you're a dom or a sub mm-hmm. or something else. Mm-hmm. But they're respected. That is inviolable. Always. So what is the importance of having a safe word versus just saying stop? You know, it might be sexy to have a scene where you say, no, no, stop, don't do it. Mm-hmm. And the person keeps going. 
Mm-hmm. And if you say ahead of time, this is what I want, don't listen when I say stop. Listen when I say pineapple mm-hmm. or red. Because um, those are not words that would normally come not up usually. during a sex scene. <laughs> like, oh, rub me with your pineapple. <laughs> so that pineapple in my mouth. <laughs> not very commonly. Right. And so it it lets you and it have that fantasy. You, yeah, and then also I guess that word is so – such a contrast to the other words that are being said totally. in the exchange that just it. pulls you out of it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and you're right, pulls you out of it. Yeah. Yeah, because pineapple is like a couple, few syllables. Yeah, you really have to so. want to say pineapple. Y- yeah. It's not a word that just rolls <laughs> off the tongue no. naturally. No, <laughs> no. But, I mean, saying no or keep to continue going when someone says no, that's a very valid and sexy fantasy. Right. So pick a different word. Right, right. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.